In this video, I'm gonna show you how to implement smooth parallax scrolling effect like this one. You can see how the images inside the cards move up or down based on the scroll direction. Before I jump to code to show you how to implement this, I would like to show you how it works in the div tools. So in this example, we are representing each card with a div element that has the card class. If we open up this, we can see we have another element called image wrapper, and inside of it, we are displaying the image element. Now, instead of displaying the image directly inside the card, we are wrapping it with a wrapper. And the reason for that is that we want to make the wrapper height bigger than its parent, which is the card element. So you can see that the card element has 350 pixels by 350 pixels, but the wrapper has a 350 pixels in width, which is the same, but the height is 700 pixels, which is bigger than its parent. We need to do this so we have room to move the wrapper inside the card without reaching its boundaries. And we are moving the wrapper using the transform translate property. So we are moving the Y position based on the scroll direction. So when we scroll down, we are increasing this value, which means we are moving the image down. But when we scroll up, we are decreasing this value, which means we are moving the image up. Now the tricky part here is to learn how to calculate this value in a way that it doesn't reach its boundaries and it moves along with the direction of the scroll. So let's jump to code to learn how to implement this. So I'm here in an empty project and I'm gonna start by adding a card element. So we will create a div element with a card class and inside of it we will add the wrapper, so let's call it an image wrapper. And inside of it we will add the image. So I'm gonna add here some test image. If I save, we will see it like this. Now let's go to the CSS and update the styling. In the CSS, I'm gonna start with the card element. So I'm gonna set the width to 350 pixels and the height the same. So let's set it to 350 pixels. I'm gonna also add some border radius. So let's make it, for example, 20 pixels. Let's set the overflow to hidden so we hide everything outside its boundaries. So now let's update the wrapper. So I'm gonna say the width is 100%, which is the same as it's the card. And for the height, I'm gonna make it bigger. So let's make it 200%, which means it's double its height. So that didn't update the wrapper because we also need to update the image. So let's say image wrapper, image, and I'm gonna set the width to 100% and the height to 100%. So it should be the same width and height as its wrapper. And also let's fix the distortion of the image by setting the object fix to cover. So it's always covering the whole area. Now for testing purposes, we need to add some space above and below the image so we make the page scrollable. And there's a trick I do for this is by adding some element called space and give it the height 100 viewport. So when I add an element with the space class, it will expand the whole viewport in height. So let's add this element above the card, let's say space, and let's also add it below it. So when I save, we can see now we have space to scroll the page. Now our next step is to go to JavaScript. So in JavaScript, I'm gonna add a function called init cards. This is where I'm gonna write all the code related to this effect. But we need also to call it, so let's say init cards. First, I'm gonna get all the card elements. Even though we have a single example here, it's better if we can implement it for all the cards if we add more cards. So let's say const card elements, and I'm gonna say document.query selector all. I'm gonna get all the card elements. To make the code more modular, I'm gonna add all the code related to the card element inside the class called card. So I'm gonna accept the element of the card in the constructor, like this. And let's say it's card element. And then I'm gonna assign it to a property called card element, card element. To make sure it works, we need to console log some message. So let's say card created. Now we need to map all the card elements to that card class using this. So first we need to map the card elements to an array because this is a node list. So let's say card from card elements. And we'll map each one using the map function and it will take the card element and we will create a new card object saying new card and pass in the card element. Let's assign this to a variable called cards. If I save and I open up the dev tools, we can see that we have card created. I'm gonna update the transform property values inside a method called update. But first we need to get the image wrapper. So we can say this dot image wrapper card L query selector and let's say image wrapper. So now in the update method, 
we will say this dot image wrapper dot style dot transform and we're gonna say translate x will be zero y will be y position we don't have this variable yet so let's say y position equals zero so we need to call this method every time we scroll and there is an event for this that we can listen on the window object so we can say window dot add event listener scroll and let's call the on scroll function which we will define here on scroll so what i'm going to do here is that i'm going to call the update method on each scroll event so let's say cards which we get all the cards from here dot for each card and let's call card dot update to make sure this is called let's say update so now when I scroll down, you can see we are calling the update method every time we are scrolling up or down. Now our next step is to figure out how to calculate the Y position. So the idea is that we need to get first the height difference. And what I mean by that is that if we inspect this, we can see that there is a difference between the height of the card, which is in this case 350 pixels, and we have the image wrapper height is 700 pixels. While we know for this example that the difference is 350 pixels, but what about the cases where we can have different heights? So we need to calculate this dynamically instead of hard coordinate. So to find the difference in height, we need to get both heights and then subtract them. So first, let's say card height will be this dot card element. And I would like to get that value from get bounding client tract. And on this object, we can access the height. Now let's get the image wrapper height. So we will say image wrapper height is this dot image wrapper dot get bound client red dot height. Now the height difference, so let's say height diff is the card height minus image wrapper height. So if you log this height diff and we reload and we display this when we scroll, so we can see that it's negative 350 pixels. So it's negative because we are subtracting the card height from the image wrapper height instead of the other way around. And we need it in negative because the image wrapper starts at the very top of the card when we are at the very top of the viewport. And when we scroll down, we need to move the image wrapper up. And moving up means that we should change the value of the Y position in negative. Since we will calculate the height difference only once on the page load, then it doesn't make sense to put it in the update method. Instead, we can put it in the constructor, so it's less expensive. So let's say this, and we will put it here. And to make sure this works, let's reload. And you can see it's only calculated once, and it's 350 pixels in negative. But now we need to access the height diff in other method like the update method. So we need instead to make it a property by saying this dot height diff. So now we have the first part, which is the height diff. And the basic idea here is to calculate the Y position using the height difference. So we know that the total amount of pixels we can move for the image wrapper is 350 pixels. But we also need to know the current scrolling position of the card element. So if it is, for example, at the very top of the page, then it should be zero. But when we scroll down, then it should be more than that. And we can get this as the progress value. So how much in percentage did we move the card element for the viewport? So first we need to access the top position of the card. And we can do this using the bounding client tract on the card element. So let's say top offset of the card is this.cardl.getBoundingClientTract.top. So if we log this top offset card, so we can see that when we scroll up, the value of the top offset card changes and it decreases until we hit the top of the viewport. When we hit it, it becomes zero and then negative. And when we scroll down, this value changes in positive. So that means that we can get the progress of moving the image wrapper based on this value. But in order to calculate the progress, we need to know the, the full height of the page. So what we need to say is the top offset, which is this value divided by the whole height of the page, then it will give us a value in percentage. And then we can multiply that percentage by the height difference, which will give us how much we should move the image wrapper up or down. So we will calculate the progress saying progress equals top offset card divided by the whole height, which is window 
dot.inner height. Now, if we log this value, and let's remove these, so you can see this works as a percentage. When we hit top of the viewport, then it becomes zero. And when we move down, it increases. So if we multiply this value by the height difference, then we know how much we should move the image wrapper using the transform property. So last step is to say progress times the height difference. Now if you reload, oh, actually it doesn't work because we have to update this in pixels. Now let's reload and try this. You can see how this changes, like we can move the transform property like this. If we open up the div tools, you can see how this value changes when we scroll up or down. Okay, cool, so that works. But before we end this video, we can optimize the performance to make sure it always hits 60 frames per second. If I go to the rendering tab here and I check the paint flashing, you can see that each time we scroll, we repaint this area, which will be an expensive operation since we are scrolling many times. What we can do is that we can create a new layer for this element using the will change property on the CSS. So let's move the image wrapper to a new layer since it's the one we are moving. So what we can say is we'll change transform and then if we reload and we are checking the paint flashing, if I scroll up or down, we are not repainting anymore, which means it's way much faster. Now if I reload, you can see there is a small issue here, is that the position doesn't get updated when the DOM loads. So when I scroll, you can see how it jumps. To fix this issue, we need to make sure that we call this code when the DOM loads. So actually, let's move this code in another function called update. And let's move it to here. And then we will call update here. And also call it when the DOM loads down here. So when I reload, it will always make sure that the position gets updated when we load the page. One last optimization I'd like to do here is to make sure that the code here is called inside a request frame animation like this. So if I say request animation frame, and I call the update here. And let's do the same here. And say update. While you might not notice any difference here, but actually this guarantees that the code here is always synced with the browser pixel pipeline. While we know that the on scroll will be called on every frame, it's not guaranteed that it will be called properly in the pixel pipeline. That's why we usually put anything that is related to animation inside a request animation frame. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new here, and if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments section. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.